What's going on, everyone? We are back again for another episode of the Student to Life podcast. I am your host, Shan, and this is my co-host. Sure. And guys, we have a special episode for you today. I'm not gonna get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> but we are here with two of my main guys, my salon family, 88 and Bailey. Hi guys, Ooh. cheers. Yeah, that was good. Cheers, cheers. Yeah. So, before we go any further, guys, please remember to like, subscribe, share, and comment on this episode throughout, after, no matter, just, you know, get into the mix. Um, so, I'm so excited to have this podcast because I'm going to take some trips down memory lane, you know? <laughs> can we take some too? Yeah, we can take a look at Memories. Right? So, mm -hmm. the first thing that we typically ask our guests is pretty much what does student to life mean to them? When you hear the word when student to life, word. what does that mean to you? Let's start with Billy. So, when I heard student to life, I was thinking, you know, like life is all about learning through the experiences. And that's the best way to learn. So when I started doing the life, I was like, okay, this is about real, real talk, yes. real stuff. Yes. So. What about you, idiot? Uh, I mean, student life to me. I mean, in life, we are all students. Right. We're all that's learning. Mm -hmm. We're always learning every day. So um, from what I see from it, I mean, as long as you're a student, you're gonna always learn. So you're gonna learn in life from from your own experiences and then watching other people's experiences. It's Shannon was right. It's like everybody has different meanings. Mm -hmm. You know, when they hear the words, everybody has different wording. But it's all these back to the same thing. Most it all leads back to it. But I just <laughs> I love hearing the different perspective of it. That's the beauty of it. So, well, I don't know if you guys know, they are the owners of All Dot Up. Um, but I want to kind of like trickle back a little bit into who Eighty Eight is and who Bailey is. Oh, give me the rundown of who is Bailey. Bailey, I am. All right, Bailey, I am is um okay. So I, I go by Shalon Fenor as my kind of my claim to fame. You know, I, I've dedicated almost a decade and a half to the beauty business uh, as a professional salon owner now, and uh, you know, marketing operations. And then uh, on my second life, it would be family, because you know, it's family on business. My mom has been in this since 1985. So mm -hmm. she's been 30 something plus years in the business. You mean hair business? Yeah, in oh, yeah. hair business. Oh yeah, she's a life. she's a lifer. Mm -hmm. and, um, and of course I went to college, so I'll be a college boy too. I was in a fraternity. I'll be a frat boy. Cute dog. Cute dog. Yeah. Oh, I got to. I got to do this. We got it. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, uh, but yeah. So then, of course, I'm a family man. Then I'm a. You know, I got a wife. I got children. Yeah. And then I'm a. You know, I'm a good friend. I'm a brother. A cousin. I do all that. And you grew up in the salon yeah. and being around it. Yeah, that's probably like sweeping floor or something. Yeah. yeah. That was my first job. I got so much questions for y'all, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about you. Um, I don't know. 88 is just a laid back dude that uh, just goes with the flow. Um, uh, coming into this business, uh, something I didn't even think about even coming into. Right. It was, it was new for me. Um, 13 years in the game. Learning a lot from uh, learning a lot from Bailey. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I just like a just like y'all, student of life. I'm still learning. Right. So now becoming an owner now, this is a new lane for me. Coming, you know, coming into this company, I started as a shampoo assistant. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I worked my way up to become an owner. So like, hey, I'm, I'm still learning the game. So, so I understand on Bailey's side why he got into it because he saw examples of that. But what made you want to get into the hair industry? 
Um, I got into the hair industry uh, basically to change my life from what I was before. Right. Um, I was a street level dude, mm. being out in the streets doing you know all kind of wrong. But why not a barber though? <laughs> uh, actually, actually, to be honest, before yeah. I became a hairstylist, I was told that I should become a barber. Right. But um, at that time, my barber actually told me to go to barber school. And at that time, I really didn't understand what the hair industry was about because mm-hmm. he did women's hair and he did men's hair. Right. So to me, I didn't know what a, a barber, barber you was. Know, I didn't yeah. know what a barber was. I didn't mm-hmm. know what a hairstylist was. Mm-hmm. And I went to school and I signed up to come to school to go to become a barber. And the school that I went to had a barber program, but at the time they didn't have a barber teacher. So I had to take cosmetology in the meantime. I was like, look, I need to be in school. <laughs> so I went to school and got into cosmetology. And the crazy part about it, women were the one who kind of convinced me to go into, yeah. into the hair industry. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They what? Me. The so women? I got, I got a question. So when, when you ask that question, right? Mm-hmm. So now, it's interesting. Sometimes it's a leading question. Right. But my personal opinion, Okay, so if I'm doing a service, mm-hmm. you, ever, you you go to a barber, yes. right? Would you rather have a woman barber or a male barber? Honestly speaking, I would rather have a male or female barber. Yeah. <laughs> and the female, and that's I, what I'm I, will, but I, have a, I have a male barber, but I, see, I have a female right, so barber. I got a great, I got a great yep. male barber. But right. if you get a female barber, it's just something special. And, so now, yeah. again, when, you know, when I got into the thing, I was like, okay, I want to be a barber. Then I'm doing dude. I, I was starting off as a barber. I was a barber in college. I don't like dudes like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be around a dude. Right. I don't want to be around a dude. Hey, right. I don't want, definitely want to shampoo. I'll shampoo your hair, though. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want to shampoo your hair. But with a woman, it's just, to, natural. Me it was, to me, it was more natural yeah. of an experience. So I preferred it, and the women paid more. Right. So I was just like, Okay. For me, that was the vibe. That, that, <laughs> that was my vibe. I, I know that's a question y'all get asked all a lot. lot. So that's why time. I asked the question. And, and I actually want us, we're going to get more into that. I just remember, I remember that story of my mom when I first started cutting got here and I was like you know mom I want to practice on your hair you know to cut it or whatever and she was like oh no and I said Bailey's gonna be my trainer she was like okay well we can do it I was like really uh-huh. yeah. so it's like if women they love that a man could do hair like they'd rather be touched by a man yeah. to do their yeah, hair be touched by it but you know it's not an industry that you hear a lot of guys going no no no, no, no. yeah and, so, so it's like, and that's why they could dominate in it it's like the nursing yeah i took advantage yeah of that. i took advantage of that yeah now, again to, to a detriment because i have uh, i had some friends recently they were like man i thought you were on the other side <laughs> uh, not that that's the other i thought you were on the other side yeah yeah, like, yeah. Tell you. And i've heard that point i'm like yeah. Yeah. That is you want to try but, but, but if you think about it, you think about it <laughs> most of the guys that do it yeah. they are on there's, the other a, there's side. a population yeah. But I always compare it to like music. Like, you know, you got the rappers mm-hmm. and you got the R&B guys. You got the Drakes and you got like the Kodaks. Right. Yeah. So and you got my the vibe was, yeah, my, got my, the, my vibe was like a Drake type vibe. You know, we he like to play hip hop music. We more urban. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you know, like one thing it's just right. the women was the our, our more comfortable work with women. And that's what I was it, it so actually much made questions. made the experience for me more comfortable working with them. Yeah. Didn't it make it a nice vibe? Yeah, it was such a beautiful balance. Oh, we had straight and we had gay guys. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We had both working in the yeah. salon, but we, it's we always had like just a natural balance, a balance with it. Yeah, that male. And, yeah. But that's that. That's, that's, that's the thing. That, like for us as men, we see that, but we like a lot of people look from outside and they don't uh, understand yeah. the logics behind yeah. a man wanting to do yeah. a woman here. But I'm looking at it from what you guys. I would want to do it now because yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing, listen, I'm seeing I'm seeing ten, fifteen women a day in right. here. I'm hey. winning, bro. Yeah. Right. yeah, and they paying you for it. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Less competition. So it's like- well, I think a lot of guys though, a lot of guys would know how to handle seeing so many women, especially daily, because. The misogyny and you know not knowing how to handle themselves being in that in space. That space. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. We gonna talk about that. I'm gonna get y'all with that later. <laughs> sure. we'll get y'all a little bit. Did I sign that waiver? Did you sign it? I, I told you. I told you that. <laughs> so even though you guys you know kind of came up in it, I know Jay came up in it a little bit later in life. 
when you was in the salon sweeping, was that in your mind like, okay, this is what I want to do? Or were you just like, man, I want to, I want to, you know, I, I want to go play, do some I, other I, stuff. I, I, I like to fish. I want to go fishing. Mm -hmm. I was only in there because I had no babysitter. <laughs> I could get five dollars a sweep, and I'm just hanging out. That yeah. Way. What would what did, if you wasn't doing hair? What would you do outside of that? Fishing. That's it. For a living. Yeah. Oh, oh you said now? For a living. No, no for no, a living, no, in that, general. If yeah, it wasn't here. at that younger, the younger Bailey, 18-year-old Bailey graduating in high school. Well, I went out to college, and I was just thinking more business. I didn't know what business. Mm. I, was thinking. I didn't really consider it as a business back then. I was just like, this is what mom does, you know, family business. Yeah. I was thinking I was just going to go get some business or something. I didn't understand the concept of it. Mm. So I just went to college. So when you came in, was where you that's when you brought the business into it, in the mix of it. Well, yeah, I came back and I was like, okay, well, I need to get a job. So, <laughs> I remember I could sweep the floor. I was yeah. like cutting hair in college because when you're around things, you kind of peep it. So you mm -hmm. see, I always say when I was in college, I never had to worry about food. Because you worked All for All of it. my friends were worried about food and everything. And I was just like, let me cut I your hair. One haircut, I go get a pizza. Back then, college, a pizza was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Fire, bro. Like, yeah. I that's like Italian, <laughs> Italian food. Pizza, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That was my vibe back then. So when I got home, I was like, okay, there's always money here. <laughs> and it was just, you know, picked it up where I got it. And then after you apply for a job, it's ready to go. What about you, 88? Man, look. You look like a linebacker if you ever want play football. <laughs> he was in the street game. I was, I was, he was in the streets. I, I left the streets and got legit. The first job I really, really had was a dishwasher. Yeah. I hated that job. <laughs> I did that like four years. I hated that job. I hated yeah. that job. Because to leave that life of what I was making before mm -hmm. and, and then become legit, You're right. that was not easy. That was not easy mm -hmm. for me at all. Um, so you didn't ever dream to do anything like growing up like I want to be this one thing and I love this. When I was in the streets, I only wanted, I only cared about trap street money, yeah. the trap value. Is it because of what you saw growing up? Yeah, I mean, because at that time... Um, Tell them where you from, Jay. From Brooklyn. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, um, Growing up, watching... Um, the dudes who have the money get all the girls, yeah. all the cars. The all best the clothes, girls. yeah. You know, um, trying to be a regular dude wasn't... <laughs> and the thing. That wasn't paying. <laughs> so, um, street level was for me. I, I love being in the streets. I love, you know, um, catching every sale that I could. Right. You know, just to have that money. You know, I got sisters. I got family. So, I just wanted to... I wanted to have what they had. Right. So, for me... Um, I never thought about, like, me doing hair, that never crossed my mind. Right. One of my sisters could do hair, um, and I used to tell her, like, look, why don't you just get a, you know, I'll pay for the money, get a shop, and mm -hmm. I'll just, to me, I'm thinking about washing the money to right. look clean, mm -hmm. but she was like, nah. I'm washing the money to make it look clean. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but I didn't you even know your mind said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. true. You know, so at that time, that's what I thought, but the weird part was, she was an inspiration for me to actually get in the, in the industry because I saw her knocking down the whole block where a lot of people were coming to come get her their hair done for mm -hmm. her, whether it was guys yeah. or girls. No, oh, yeah, other sister, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they would, she was getting all the money, and I'm like, damn, you doing this legit? Yeah. So I'm like, maybe I should try to do this stuff like that. Mm -hmm. you know? I thought it was cool. I mean, I didn't know I didn't know how to be a regular person. Right. So to to get into this lime life of not being in hand, I just bring the street life into the salon. I just bring that hustle into the salon. Mm -hmm. You know. Speaking um, of speaking of hustle, mm -hmm. I know I know like when you go into certain industries, especially this one, because this this industry is broad. Like there's so much ways to make money in this industry. Mm -hmm. You could sell the hair. You could. Um, do the hair, you could cut hair, you could, you know, do cosmetics, yeah. you know, you could do nails, you could do all of these things. But if you guys ever thought about branching off to doing like you're the, the, the supplier for hair or or even like do makeup side of it or stuff like that, you guys ever thought about that? I have. I mean, um, I've learned a lot from Ben. Right. Like a lot of stuff that I've that I've learned, I've learned from him. Because mm -hmm. I never knew how this industry could really go. And being around him and learning the experiences of what he's done mm -hmm. made me feel like, well, well I, I want to have a salon where you can have everything in one spot. Women are going to go get their hair done, but then they're going to rush to go get their 
yeah. eyebrows done right. or they getting their lashes done. I want to be able to be the one-stop shop. Be one-stop shop where mm-hmm. I can have it all in one shop. Mm-hmm. So the client can have that great experience knowing that they got their hair done, they get their eyebrows done, they can get their lashes done, you know, mm-hmm. whatever they can do. I want to be a part of something like that. Right. So it's important to me. What about you, really? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the name of business is to um, figure out new ways to do it and if there's a trend to be a part of it. But um, we kind of, my approach, I'm getting a little bit older in the game, so my approach is a little bit more, not based on necessarily wisdom, but based on patience. Like some things are going to come to you naturally. You're going to look for an opportunity. And when you see that opportunity naturally show itself, that's going to be for you. I'm not going to chase if everybody's selling hair, if everybody's doing it, we're not going to chase it. We're going to try to see what's hard lane. Mm-hmm. And uh, really, when we get a green light or something, we run with like we run with uh, something that comes to us naturally. Yeah. So everything we've done, we've done based on the, the right timing. But yeah, there's it's unlimited options in the business. And we encourage like partners, mm-hmm. team members. You know, we never knock somebody. If you, if you think you can hustle the hair game, I will advise you from a business standpoint. Like I'll tell you all the time, you know, your competitors getting a, container shipped over <laughs> he goes to the extreme yeah. every time are you gonna be competitive mm-hmm. but if you want to if you can squeeze the extra 50 out of it great mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe that's not our business right but i ain't never knocked a, a person doing a business i'm always encouraged by giving you the real information yeah um, we always talk about people being talented and have talent but no work ethic we talk about it all oh, the time boy. where so many people they could do <laughs> 10 people's hair, but I sit in your chair, but I don't get no good service. You know, I, 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 I come to your appointment and you're late. You're not even there. You know, stuff like that yeah. makes you lose. We talk, that's his, that's his thing, right? The work ethic is, so, like, you, like that schedule you told me, mm-hmm. is the schedule you told me before we started, right? Really, you said, I wake up at this time, mm-hmm. I got this plan, this plan, this plan. Those entrepreneurs, those are, that's, a, that's the type of people that we are typically involved with. Right. Mm-hmm. But, you don't always see that same, that energy is not always matched in, in this industry. Mm-hmm. So you have somebody thinking that they can get that done in three, four hours and they're doing something. Right. I don't understand how it happens. Mm-hmm. But you're going to be a new professional in any business and you think you're going to get done in four hours? we putting in 16 hours. Mm-hmm. I've been up since four. You've been up since six. Right. We're going to wake up at four again. Mm-hmm. It's just really. lifestyle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, we don't see a lot of work ethic, especially in this industry, the newer yeah, professionals. I was going to ask you yeah. what. Professionals have figured yeah. it out. No. But they'll figure it out when they get hungry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When they're trying to compare incomes, they'll see the worker, people that are putting in work, get rewarded. Right. How, how, so, because I know when, you know, with the era that I came up in, when social media was, it wasn't even fully there yet. Mm-hmm. I think you had a flip phone. Mm-hmm. I had a flip. I had every phone. Sidekick. Right. You know what a sidekick is? <laughs> My generation. Yeah, like, and we <laughs> had to literally print cards and go out and give cards out and be in the salon for 10 plus hours and grind and grind and grind. And now with this industry with social media and it being so quick and these girls not even really going to beauty school sometimes. Yeah, skip it. Right. And I know with it all that up in particular, you can't work here unless you're licensed professionally. So what is the difference that you've seen now with this new generation than the generations that I came up with and before that? Well, like, like the, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, he's, on, he's, in, he's in the salon more dealing with them hands on. I, I get the call, but it's just like you said, they just aren't. The work ethic is just not there. Now, again, you would think, imagine if you had Instagram when you started, you would have been 10 times along faster. Because mm-hmm. you have to go to the walk now, you just post some great mm-hmm. work. Mm-hmm. You capture. You could. You don't need to do that now at your level. Right. You gonna get customers based on your work and mm-hmm. your experiences in the past. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. We would have t- terrorized with that type of technology. Yeah. yeah. But you still got work. But they're idiot, not idiot. utilizing it to this yeah. to the fullest capacity. Work. Yeah. What yeah. you think about the difference, idiot? What yeah. you think? Uh, <laughs> Gen Z is something I I'm, I've never even experienced. Gen Z till now becoming the owner. Um, I've been with all the other going on. This year makes 13 years. Next year will be 14 years. I've been with this company and all I ever saw were grinders. Yeah. Like people getting in like when Chantal came into the uh, came into the company, 19 years into the game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she she had a hustle in her 
And I wanted to be around her for the simple fact that she knew how to hustle. She knew how to get this money. She knew how to get the clientele, give them great customer service. And then they were coming back booking like every time when she mm -hmm. said, I need to see you. There was no, well, I don't know, or maybe. <laughs> it was it was a guarantee. Yeah. He used to get dropped off with us mm -hmm. in the morning. He, he get there at six. I get there six oh five. <laughs> we used to have you get there. Right. Mm -hmm. She show up about seven ish, eight ish. Uh, Ma, I think you get dropped off or you, you yeah. drop off. Yeah. You drop off. And then when it's time to go, it's late at night. It's nine, like 10, 10 o'clock. <laughs> one, one She's leaving. They don't do that. That, yeah. that would be like, uh, if we ask for that from some one of the team, they might damn near call her. <laughs> 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 I don't know. <laughs> yeah. They just don't understand that. Right? I, th I, think, I think with this generation, I think, this, this social media era made everything like seem like it's it's easily attainable you know what i'm saying yeah. like a lot of people pay attention to the the accomplishments because i've been a dj for so many years and recently like right before the pandemic is when we started getting certain notoriety and it's like you guys just started i'm like no we've been doing this and i have the track record to show it yes. the same thing with a lot of people and now this generation sees it and they're trying to figure out that this is why I think um, like Forex and um, stocks and all these things. That's how they caught them so fast because they thought it was fast money. Quick, it's a quick turnaround. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that even that is a long game too. You know, playing that is a long game. So it's like nowadays Ponzi schemes are so easy to catch people with scams because you want the money so fast mm -hmm. that you're not persistent enough to say, I'm going to be patient to wait it out to say, I'm going to take the time out to put the work in and see what comes of it. Mm -hmm. Like. 19 keys i was listening to him and he, he said something and i was like he was like you no gen z right now is going to wait 10 years for a business to develop and make money yeah. give them two years and they're going to quit they're going to leave that alone you hear what i'm saying exactly yeah. and uh, with a lot of us that's from back in the day we're like two years <laughs> sometimes we're grinding for years before that and yeah. we, we're just living paycheck to paycheck till one day just decide to go off and i feel like a lot of times even with us uh, like older, older than the Gen Z, with us, we haven't transformed ourselves in business in a way where we've been doing it the same way for so many years that you haven't added that extra ingredient to make your business go over that hump. That's the other side. Exactly. Yeah. So, so two sides. Yeah, it's two sides of it. They got something going. They innovate. Right. We got something missing. Mm -hmm. We're afraid of innovation. Exactly. Right. And I feel like that's the, the hump that we haven't, like a lot of people haven't gotten over, especially as black businesses, right. has gotten over that hump because some, it's something simple as showing up on time. Mm -hmm. It's something as simple as giving a little bit extra to mm -hmm. make your customer feel appreciated, to make your customer feel good, give away something. You know, they come in today, give them a compliment. There's just something simple as that would make your business go over that little hump that, you, that it needs to go over. So the Gen Z innovates, but don't put in the blood, sweat, and tears. We don't innovate, but we put the blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> because, because we're so used to this working, 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 right. working, yeah. and not evolving. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the difference. That's different. Um, I must say that you guys taught me the the benefit of teamwork and i want to talk about that like the like the importance of it even with getting the podcast together when he reached out to me and he wasn't even you remember you wasn't even sure on a date mm -hmm. he was like and i'm like i literally had a what would barely do experience no word yeah and he was like well, what would i do put a date on it put, let's, set a, put it on the calendar let's put set a date i'll mm -hmm. show you my calendar right now i already know that wild and i and i learned that from him and with us even this because i i think outside of ecstatic this is your next like team outside yeah. of it you know mm -hmm. and i you know keeping it to, with him and us keeping it together a lot of those strategies came from all that up that i've learned um so talk to us about that you know with going hard with teamwork because a lot of people now it's this generation is really antisocial, mm -hmm. and um, wear it on the shirt. They got the shirt. Mm -hmm. that's the, that's right, that's the vibe. exactly. And you can't get nowhere. You have to have a team to elevate. Right. You know, so I right. see you guys go ahead. I'm gonna throw in my loot. Yeah. <laughs> that's all, again, I, I, did, I mean, I did. I was taught that as well. Mm -hmm. And it, if you look at any formula, any playbook. It's a team there. Mm -hmm. And they always say, oh, you got this one person, you may be a star, but without a team, you can't make it. LeBron came back. I mean, it's unlimited. So I just, mm -hmm. I didn't make that up. That's just what it is. So once you get to a certain space where you got to get somewhere, 
you gonna have to figure out who you yeah, get there with. Yeah, who, yeah. You gonna have to figure out who you gonna get there with. So that was just my point. Though. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think about the teamwork thing? Oh man, look, teamwork is like he's big on that. Yeah, important. Like you know what I'm saying? Like to me, um, there is no I in team. You know, and like everybody, want, you know, Michael Jordan had to learn that he couldn't do it. No matter how many points he scored, right, right, he could still get sixty points and still lose. Mm-hmm. Until you got a Scottie Pippen, uh, 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 Steve Kerr, uh, yeah. all those other players to be able right to right. make him to be able to make him get those rings. Mm-hmm. You can't do nothing without a team. I think I think with the new generation, I think this whole um, electronic era where a lot of kids don't go outside and play sports and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I learned mm-hmm. team building from playing sports. Mm-hmm. I've played like six sports in my lifetime. You know, I grew up in Ireland, so I play soccer, I play cricket, I play all these sports. So that taught me the value of teamwork. Not only that, it taught, teaches you the value of everybody being on the same page with the team. Because if you have five guys that's going in this direction, one guy is just lagging behind, you're holding everything back because we need your, your, your contribution to the team too. So if you are part of this team and you're not pushing your weight, now the weight falls on everybody yeah. else. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we learned that from teamwork. So I feel like this generation, they have so much individuality. You know, they have the Instagram where it's just me. You know, if you go to my Instagram, you're going to see just me there. If you go, you know, if I'm in, in my house playing a video game, I'm in the video game with the headphones on, it's just me. Mm-hmm. It's just an individual thing. Yeah. So you see that decline in younger people playing sports now. Mm-hmm. And an increase in like online activity. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. right now I have a I have a nephew. He's six two, and he's thirteen years old. He wears a size fifteen shoe, so he know how big he is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He has no hand eye coordination because he's never really been into sports. You don't really like sports like that. Mm-hmm. But you give him a phone, he'll be on that for hours. He's work at that. Exactly. Ooh, so with the world of technology we going into. That, that is what I'm saying. So I feel like. Um, if you suspend Instagram for a day, I feel like there'll be a lot of crazy people running around. <laughs> they have no idea what to do with themselves. And the crazy thing is, we learn what we love from going outside and making all these mistakes and trying everything. Mm-hmm. We tried everything, literally. We yeah. tried swimming, we tried all these different things in order if I like this thing that. or not. Mm-hmm. They're not even trying nothing. Though. No. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're seeing it online and be like, you know, so this is that- going to be the wave? It's going to be worse when AI drops in. When right? AI drops in our lap, it's going to be even worse. Because now it becomes, I can tell this thing to do what I want it to do. Mm-hmm. I don't have to do a contract right now. I to go to AI and say, I love you, AI. Yeah. I, I, I start using ChatGPT just yeah, the other day. Like, this thing is crazy. I just heard about that. You know? yeah. ChatGPT. Oh, you that, one, that, right. that ship is sailing. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Man. It's not like back in the day where you had to do everything. You have to walk over there to do something. Now you can literally send a text message and you get it done. That's mm-hmm. so simple. It is. If you want food, you can get it on your phone. If you want a ride, you can get it on your phone. You, you can't even be stranded yeah. no more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so bad it is. So everything is going to be so easy to get that nobody is going to want to work. Not that's how, that's what I think. So that you, that's what that's, I don't know if we're going to get into government conspiracies, but the with government, the AI. I mean, just what he just said right mm-hmm. here, that's, that's going to, you know, there's a breakdown in how we operate as a society. Right? Yeah. That's going to cause a whole bunch of issues. Like the AI, mm-hmm. have you seen the Burger King or the McDonald's? They're, they're rolling out with no people in it yet? No. Yeah. Oh. They're rolling out. All of these sure. things were, okay, because they're tired of people not being able to work. Not work. Team. Mm-hmm. You want to work? This robot going to work. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to hire you no more. Mm-hmm. That's our solution. So they've already solved that. But we're, the issue, we can't find somebody to do a haircut. Right. So we, I mean, we can't find a robot to do it. So they've already fixed it. They mm-hmm. found replacements of people. So now what are those people going to do? I feel like I feel like we though we as black people have to figure out how to get into that industry because it's not it's not going to turn back if we you know if if we don't get into it so I feel like we need to figure out how to get into it STEM. and STEM. and and make yeah make it's someone ever yeah like STEM yeah so that goes into STEM. my next question because we were speaking with talking about you know earn your leisure and stuff um, how like being in the hair industry how did that branch help with branching off and making you know having incomes from other businesses for you guys with and i know now you you know you're in other lanes which i want to talk about later but Mm -hmm. just while you were in it i know that you know it was easy for us to like for me personally i wanted to always think of like what's next outside of it you know 
So that's something we're working on constantly because I, I had that conversation uh, with Mr. Lucas a lot. But there always needs to be, like I told you, hey, this is just always a part of your journey, but this is not the end of it. Like, this right. is part of it. Mm -hmm. So, like, it does free up your time. Now, what we do at that time, Mm -hmm. It's up to you. It's up to you, mm -hmm. but it does free up your time. Mm -hmm. So with that time, again, I you know I like to get into stuff like schools. Mm -hmm. So I, you know I like to be around people that look geeky. I'm on my geek thing right now. Right. But when you get the time freed up, you look for your passion and see what. Right. So I mean, school, education, training. Uh, I played golf for a couple of years. That was kind of hard for I like golf. Mm -hmm. I picked that up. Um, he didn't seem like shoes and shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he could be from there, but. Um, what you got? What, what you guys think about finding somebody to say, for instance, you own it now, right? And you have to, you're gonna branch off now. How hard it is for you to find somebody to take over that role to run that business for you? They can do that for years too. Yeah. How long have you went through now? Maybe like seven. We've had Six. right now. We y'all still have three. Three, yeah. three now. We're gonna be on four shortly, hopefully in the area. So we've had we've had seven in total. We're going on our fourth. We'll be on our fourth project. So, you know, that's natural in business. Open, you grow some. Every growing pain is a you gotta mm -hmm. retract some. But um, yeah, we're at four. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be at four. I don't know what was the question again. Yeah, yeah. How hard it is to find somebody to take over that spot. Look. <laughs> Regardless, whatever position you're in, and you want, you want to say step out and go do yeah. something. Somebody got to be there to take over that role. In fact, you can't even really do it like that. You gotta. You gotta have somebody that's already with the company. Yeah, that's because it's a passion. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have to. Um, so you can't find somebody to replace you. You have to find somebody that wants to be elevated to that next experience, mm -hmm. and then that next experience is their experience. Mm -hmm. So that's a challenge. Yeah. Bailey gave me my first shot. Right. You know, I, like I said, for me to become a partner, I didn't even, I didn't even fathom that that was going to come to me. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I was, I like playing the role of being in the back, you know, making sure everybody else is great. I get, you know, I get better by watching everybody else and then I can learn from the mistakes that they do to be able to say, okay, well, I know when that comes, I know how to handle it. Right. Um, but for me, um, Bailey gave me my first shot. Everything that I've learned, I learned from him. So for me to become a shampoo assistant to a manager, to an ambassador, to like everything, like everything I learned, I learned from him. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, you know what I'm saying? So I had to, trust is a major thing for me. So mm -hmm. if this man gave me a shot when nobody else gave me a shot, mm -hmm. I'm gonna run with him to, if he asked me to walk into the sun, right. I'm gonna walk into the sun mm -hmm. because he showed me everything that I need to learn. Mm -hmm. So in that same time frame. What he taught me, I want to make sure that I find somebody who can do the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. Is it easy right now? No. Mm -hmm. right. It's not. It's not easy at all. But, you know, like I like I said, if Bailey didn't know that I was going to come to the company. Mm -hmm. So eventually I have to wait to find that person who I didn't think that was going to be the person right. to be right. that person. What values do you look for in, the, in, in that person? Though? What um, specific traits? Loyalty is number one. Yeah. Like loyalty has to be... That's my biggest thing. Like, um, like I said, me being with this company for 13 years, this man gave me a shot when nobody else did. Mm -hmm. And everything here that he's taught me, everything that he promised me from the beginning, from the day I met him, he's lived up to that expectation. Mm -hmm. So whatever he asked me to do, it's, not, it's never going to be a no mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with him. Same thing with people that I work like Chantal. Chantal, me and Chantal, Chantal came into the game when she was 19. I was an apprentice when she was a stylist. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So whenever she needs something, mm -hmm. knowing that I, I, she's always been there for me, whatever she wants, I'm going to be there. Yeah. So loyalty is like it's number loyalty. one for me. That's the number one thing for me. If you can't be loyal, I, I really don't know how far you're going to get in this world. I don't think this company can... I think you have to have blood, sweat, and tears in the game to and be loyal to this company to branch off with you guys. Mm -hmm. Because even when I was leaving, I was an emotional wreck. <laughs> I was like boo-hoo crying tears because I never thought that I would branch off. But mm -hmm. I had to learn that this is this was my stepping stone. This was my my stomping grounds. And it's okay to branch off because y'all will always be family, right. you know? So it's what I think for me, 
and for anybody else that comes along and comes on the team for you guys to bring them there, they have to really, this, it has to be in your heart. Right. You know, so let me ask you, Sean, what was that like? What was that like knowing that, okay, I'm, I'm not going to be doing business with these guys anymore, but you still want to keep that friendship aspect. What was that like? Um, because before I left, I, I was a manager for two years before I left. I was a small coordinator. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, I learned so much. I even cut out marijuana in the morning <laughs> oh, that, oh, that, oh. to deal with this man and the clients <laughs> and to stay too. focused. Oh, I cut it out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it, 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 and I say that jokingly, but it's serious because I took it serious. I took it very, very serious. And I knew I had him by my side for, you know, anything that I needed. But um, it leaving was... It was bittersweet. It was like, I knew I had to do it, but it was like, damn, this is all I know. This is my salon home. I, I literally came here two, um, one month after graduating beauty school. So- And you were a baby. And I, yeah, so I learned everything. I made all my mistakes and I grew so much. So it was like, okay, you learned everything and it's okay to go. And But you're not really leaving. Because if yeah. I knew I needed to come back here, I yeah. knew I'm, I always so have a space. That, that's what I was going to say. I hate to interrupt. But I don't look at it as anybody leaving. Yeah. Right. And we look at it as, okay, she's on to the next step of the journey. Now, if your journey is going to be here to, to, to go further, that's just your journey. But you're not leaving because I was just like, okay, she just evolved into something. That you yeah. Mm -hmm. You can always come back because you're a positive person. Right. You can, and there may be, this is a project we're doing. This is the opportunity. Yeah. Who knows what the future may have? Right. Five, 10, 20, 30 years down the line. Yeah. I never looked at it. If somebody's positive and we got a part, it's not, it's not really leaving to me. Yeah, so that open. was the Dame Dash Jay Z conversation. Yeah, the conversation we had. I don't look at it as a person. I look at it as a person just, we're, we're going a different, journey right now mm -hmm. yeah but journeys may line back up and i feel like i feel like a lot of times to be honest with you a lot of times if a lot of people that stay together like we we're talking about the same damn dash and jay-z thing that can make a partnership or or the business even soar even further when you take out the egos when you take out the personal mm -hmm. side of it and you guys could just stay like think about if like james harden kevin durant and all of them and stayed together at okc that would have been, been a beast team you know so do you think Jay-Z and Dame Dash, if they would stay together, would have got to... Eagles would clash. Jay-Z would have got to where he was at? It would be further. I think it would be further. I think he would have not. I'm going to tell you, I'm gonna tell you I, why. I, I can agree with you for that. I'm, I'm going to tell you why I said I that. I think that relationship had to... I, I don't think every relationship has to story. No, no, no. Okay. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not every relationship is not supposed to stay together <laughs> because sometimes you need that individuality to, ex yeah. to, 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 to see your full potential. Because yes. sometimes when you have that pillow to mm -hmm. all the time, you don't get a chance to say, all right, I'm going to take this chance and I'm going to do this on my own. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes. But sometimes when you have that backbone all the time to say, all right, if you can't, then I will. And you pick up each other's slack, it pushes you further. Yeah. But when that ego comes into play, that's, that's what, that is the part that's going to drag you mm -hmm. back. You know, but sometimes like individuality is needed in a team. Yeah. And that that is what a lot of people don't know how to do. You can still be a team. You could be you, you could be you. Me, I could be me, Shan could be her. Right. We have our own thing going on over here. But Jay-Z wouldn't be able to have that own thing going on because Dame Dash got one piece of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that I think in I that think, aspect, I think yeah. With the Jay Z and Dame, I think there was the ego challenge. Oh I yeah, think for sure. Their egos, you know, they got hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Those egos, it was the party was over. Right. I think a lot of time. <laughs> and but that, but is that not a successful enough? Yeah, it is. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think the problem is a lot of times. We got a couple million dollars together. We got to make a billion. Dollars. Right. I think go a lot. Start of, PayPal. Go start a uh, title. Go start a mm -hmm. uh, Uber or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Just like everyone, my life is jam-packed. I'm always on the move, but self-care is top priority for me. That's why I'm a part of the Texture Club at my favorite salon. My easy monthly subscription to the Texture Club solves everything. I think a lot of times though, I think people, um, you get to a certain point and now you're like, I'm not, I, I'm, a, I'm a boss now. You know what I'm saying? I feel like a lot of times 
we are a part of a team and we're not able to take a criticism from somebody because I'm making a hundred million, you're making a hundred million. Why I gotta listen to you? Yeah. <laughs> so I could go on my own and have these people feed my ego instead of have somebody by my side to say, bro, that's not the right way to do it. Yeah. That's what messes up a lot of people. Yeah. You see so many music groups break up. You see so much business relationships break up Jeez. because of the same thing. You're making, so let's say you open a salon on your own, right? and you're seeing a certain amount of money and a certain amount of people are giving you this, these compliments and saying you're the boss, you're doing the right thing and this and that. You forget that the reason why you're the, the place you are is because you had these people mm. by your side. And a lot of times we, we want so much people to feed our egos that we won't take the time out to say who's really telling us the right thing. Mm -hmm. That's the killer. And that, yeah. that is it right you figure there. Figure that out later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's too late. I cut my agent out and he was the one giving me all the money. Mm. Exactly. The you cut out your lawyer money. because he's telling you don't buy that Range Rover because it's going gonna, it's gonna to damage you. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Real talk. Real talk. So, I want to touch back into the smoke a little bit. Smoke. We got back into the fog oh. yet. <laughs> um, about the misconceptions, right? About male hairstylists mm -hmm. and stuff. And what were some of those challenges that you had with you know, those misconceptions? And you, Bailey, being you know married and having all these women clients. <laughs> <laughs> How, and this is for you to tell all the, the you know, the up and coming male stylists that's probably you gonna be married. If you're out there, ain't too many. You know, <laughs> if they out there, you know, going I mean, about that. Again, it's like a kid in a candy store. Mm -hmm. So if you're a straight male, you wanna be a lot of, around a lot of women, you wanna make a lot of money, it's an industry wide open for you. The, the one dude I remember, I, I'm not going to say his name, but he was a well-known straight male stylist mm -hmm. in the area. Not the one you think I'm talking about. <laughs> but I just remember he had a Porsche 911, but he had nine kids. Oh, shit. He ain't got no money. <laughs> he had nine kids, I mean, he could have so many women yeah. straight in the year in a woman's intimate space and you're making money. Mm. It was very, that was like my first thing. I was like, okay, I'm gonna not really cross the line yeah. in that capacity. That's how you handle the, that's how you gotta look at it. Just, but anytime you have any opportunity to be around well, women, success and, they, and like you said, they yeah. keeping the professionalism. What you, what you, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> nice guy. <laughs> I'm reading this, um, this book they call The Power of Discipline. Mm -hmm. And he talks about discipline, be, discipline being like a muscle. Like you can only say no so many times. Yes. Like you see so many beautiful women during the day, you can only not look so many times. Yeah, After a while, you start your mind start to you know you know get weaker and weaker. Like I, I guess I could take a look, and then it goes from that to I'm looking, and then yeah. from that to something else. Uh, it talks about you can exercise that as much as you want, but it doesn't get exhausting to stay in your exactly. discipline phase for so long. So, you had to learn that professionalism, keeping it professional. Yeah, you, yeah. That's, yeah. A that's a concept. concept. That's, that's a concept. concept. <laughs> if you come into this life, that's a concept. You're going to yeah. be around women. You're going to wonder why, yeah. why, you, why you're exhausted. You're going to be around women. Because you've been, you've been trying yeah. not to look the whole you're day. You're going to get mad at your wife and be like, oh, uh, <laughs> got 40 women over there that just want me to hang out. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. It's so funny you said that because. So it affects your relationship. Yeah. Even as a woman. I had to learn that early, my early years, you know, working in the salon, and I got bamboozled a few times. And cl clients would make it seem like, oh, let's hang out, you know, outside of the chair. Mm -hmm. And I was like, putting some predicaments in like, in lounges and bars, and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, it, like because I'm not. You know, so I'm just, and then I would think like, how y'all would have to really deal with that pressure. Yeah. Deal with that idiot. What? <laughs> um, I mean, I do, but I'm a street dude first. <laughs> so you don't sit with your money. You can't sit with your money. Right. So, I mean, I always keep it like, to me, the more you want me, Show me by spending your money with. Me. <laughs> hey, hey, that's, that, that, that's how I look at it. Like yeah. I, I'm, I, I get it that you might want me for a minute, but if I could keep 
the money coming. I'm coming in. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna love you for a long time. <laughs> yeah. That, that's how I look at it. I don't. Oh, I don't keep talking about that. Yeah, that's yeah. a rule. I mean, I can't. It messes up every single time you see that rule broken. It mm-hmm. just gets bad. Mm. Oh, in anything, me? not just our business. In our industry, uh, being a DJ, you told me you were like a lot of times. I mean, you might have a girl, but you might have to entertain some of them to a certain level. Don't get past that because mm. once you get past that, and you stop you mess up the money, you stop messing with them. Yeah. You know what? That's, that's, that's it. Mm. You know, you know, you're a DJ, right? Huh? You know, as a DJ. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of women. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get them to come to the party. Sly. Hey, that was when you were sly? You sly kid? These two women next to me at the DJ. Jay Ski? Jay Ski? How did you handle that? How do I handle that? <laughs> it, 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 like you said, you get to the point where you do it, you, 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 you do it so much that it's like, yo, this is. This is this gets tiring, bro. Like I don't want to do this no more. I want I want my my little one person to just mm-hmm. kick it with. But with me though, I have different personalities. Mm-hmm. When I'm on the stage, I'm somebody else. When I'm off the stage, I'm somebody else. Mm-hmm. And she could tell you like I'm not the most friendly person off the stage. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll, if it's in a business setting, we good, we talking, we mm-hmm. vibing. But if it's like getting too personal, I pull back. You get what I'm saying? Right. Because I've done. He can't it. smile at people much because they're gonna take it the wrong way. Exactly, right. but. Right. Then, but then, like the OG told me, it was like, sometimes you got to flirt with them a little bit, just a little bit. Don't go past that. <laughs> because once they feel like you're not giving them a certain friendly energy, yeah. then they, they're not fans anymore. Yeah. Like, you got to keep it. Become, you gotta be yeah, Man, exactly. I've been fondled behind the chair. <laughs> I've seen By women? fondled. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen him fondled. Yeah. But he's he's a little, he's, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, yeah. I've been, yeah. I've been. And I'm like, whoa. But, but I, Jesus. Like I said, like, I, I, all I think about is. What do you think about that, though? Like, a woman, a woman would be. Um, free to touch you, but if, if it's the other way around, it's it's a it's a line that you probably shouldn't cross. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that's <laughs> oh, yeah, like that's me. I don't know. Like, like I said, like I ch- like for me, it's me being in the slum. Like I said, it's like being on a block. Yeah, you look at it that way. I can't. I can't it's true. He didn't. I can't let you know. You come by, like you know, what's up? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Give me that money first. You know, like I'm always thinking like that. Like, um, because to me, that's. That's how I keep you. Right. I keep you in that right there. And I mean, yes, there's a lot of beautiful women. Chantal's had, Bailey's had, a lot of members that I'm like, gosh, she's bad. <laughs> but I realize the money. Yeah, it messes up the money. Pulls me a little bit. Cause like, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, but then they're gonna be like, now they're gonna be like, since we did that, I get a discount. I get that free, right? yeah, exactly. I don't wanna give you free. No, you hey, gotta right? that, yeah. And then, you know, to me, I like, if I'm gonna mess with you, what if things go bad? Now I lose. Now you lose the. Now I lose the money and, and the, the stuff. Yeah. I know. I want the money. Let me keep the money. Yeah. And I'm good to go. Run with it. Like I'd rather keep running with the money. Has there been a case where women try to get at you and you, you're like, no, you're good, and they just stop coming anyway? Absolutely. I've never had a heat pop. Yet, but <laughs> I've had a billion times. Yeah, he said a lot. Um, I used to be. There was one client I had. I was afraid of. I didn't want, I needed like Chantal to be with me because I was so scared what she might try to do to me. So I was like, Chantal, you need to come in the world. Like, I don't want to be left alone. She can't be left alone. I mean, most, like, like. He would be in a shampoo bowl like, and her hands like this. Yeah. Like, if it was, wow. okay, if it was somebody that I was trying to talk to, yeah. I'd be fun. Yeah. But no. But if, I met, if it was the other way around, it would be. Be a ra- harassment. That's what I don't understand. Like, uh, I mean, we as men, we're not complaining when a woman touch on us, but right. women, right. women don't want everybody touching right. us. So. But yeah, yeah. Every, every woman will see my like females will see my face and be like, he's not approachable, and I love that uh, because that protects me in a lot of ways. You know? I like that. I like that. Uh, like, like, like you, um, you have that face that like I'm straight business. Yeah, don't play with me. <laughs> I, always, I always look at only certain people are supposed to go past that. Exactly. Other people will see that like, no, let me leave him alone. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Will, like, he's going to cuss me out. That happened for so many years. They will go to my brother and be like, hey, tell your brother I said it. And I'm like, I'm good, bro. 
Tell them to go have their business because I'm not messing with them. Because you got to keep it professional. Yeah. If I don't do that, there would be so much problems, man, and drama that in my industry that I'm in doing music, it's like, you would think that everybody would mind their business. No, it don't work like that. You know, everybody want to know who you're with, what you're doing, like, yeah. and then they take that and it goes to, in the group chats and it goes with the friend groups and everybody talking about you. Now you become a topic, topic of discussion. It's, it's a, it's a, it's. But you're in that business though. Yeah. At this point, you guys are entertainers. Yeah. yeah. And now I have to feel the raft. Yeah. From being his co-host. Have you ever thought of just, you know, playing the long game with it and just. Hey, really? I mean, the entertainment business mm -hmm. is you, like we talk about controlling the narrative. Oh, they like that storyline? <laughs> you know what? You know what? That, that, that we, uh, we talked about it the other day. Me and some of my friends were talking. It was like, I know exactly what to say to get clicks and likes. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what yeah. direction to go in. Easy. Easy. Yeah. But that's not what our podcast is about. You know, I, I'm keeping it on this level where we're trying to teach. And I'm passionate about um, philanthropy and, you know, giving back and teaching and, you know, changing the narrative and changing the mindset of our people mainly. Mm -hmm. You know, especially black people. black people. Yes, mm -hmm. especially Caribbean people, where we grew up a certain way, where we are used to a certain mindset, and if we don't break out of that, it's going to be to our detriment. So I'm doing I'm doing my part, right, mm -hmm. in, in making it you know cool. I say that, I say that to say, you know, <laughs> and I, I get where you're going with that, mm -hmm. but I say to say when you look at the most impactful stuff. Sometimes you gotta bait them in there with sugar. Like you gotta bait them in there with it. That's why I'm here. You yes. bring them in. I put a little fire. sugar yeah. to the podcast. Man, yeah, you can really, I mean, you know, the, the really good marketers, the really good media personalities, they bait you all the way in. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at, say, the Will and Jada fiasco. Yeah. I mean, they baited us all. That's strategic. Yeah, super strategic. Completely That's what I'm trying to tell everybody. And they're like, let's launch it now. Right. And the book drops. Yeah. Exactly. And the book dropped, yeah. everybody wanted to read it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, we looking at it like, man, that's messed up, crazy. Comment like, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. like okay, no, this is what we needed. Yep, this is what we needed. What time we going to Bahamas? <laughs> mm -hmm. Bahamas. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's true. And, and your real life is not what's out it's here. Not it's not real. Just life. put stuff out here. Like yeah. you're going to podcast, yeah. and you say some crazy stuff just for you to read the book. Mm -hmm. but when the you book, do that, like, when they come into the book, you'd be like, save. Positive energy. Mm -hmm. They do a people person, right? You know, feed them in there. You yeah, can right. still give it to them, but they gotta eat it. I just, yeah. Talk about talk about a thumbnail. They're like, um, I listened to a podcast called In the Meantime Podcast with um, Two Rocks. Um, he's Jamaican, mm -hmm. so he talks about like the t thumbnail he uses and the headline. It, it reels you in. Mm -hmm. Once you hit that link. You're not hearing anything about that, right? That don't know what she's it. But you're gonna go through the clip baiting, yeah. For the positive, though. Mm -hmm. Yep. For yep. the positive, right? So I feel like I I'm trying to develop that, but it's like <laughs> I don't want to be that. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. Her job. That's what she wants. <laughs> yeah. That's why we got into balance. The, the relationship talking stuff. That's her. That's all right. her. For me, it's all about business and education, and information. Right. Yeah. All the time. And I feel like the relationship and love and stuff ties into it. Yeah, business people have love. Yeah. So do you guys have like friends? Um, when, <laughs> so somebody comes in and you guys click in a way, do you become friends outside of outside of that? Like if you do oh, drugs sure. here, you guys. All of them. my relationships always be good about business. So if I, most of my relationships while I was in the salon, uh, they're going to carry outside the salon. If it's, mm -hmm. if it's business. Like if I got a business person I want to support, I'm going to support somebody mm -hmm. that supports my business. So I always do that. So I, wherever I'm at, I'm that's my that's my trial and my service. And I learned that from you because I used to always when I first started, and I would see him have a client, and he would have a conversation with anybody, anybody that's sitting in his chair, mm -hmm. he's going to have a conversation on to, unless he realizes it's one of those clients that don't like to speak. And I would be like, how he just start off these conversations with these clients like that. And I I don't know how, but it rubbed off on me. And mm -hmm. I think that's how I even got into podcasts because. I started to find love into like like a really pa passion into like getting diving deep into learning these people, yes. and then with that, I was able to do business with them outside of the chair, yes. and I became like an asset woman because of that. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah. you gotta. I, that was my goal to be. And once I hit my thirties, I need to be accessible. Right. I need for if he asks me that I need this or find this or that, 
I need to be able to be like, oh, I know this person. Yeah. I call this person. They, they support you. All from behind the chair. Yeah, I'm, learning I, I'm those learning, strategies. I'm learning, I'm learning the importance of, of um, networking and the importance of relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But what I learned on my side, even being a DJ, uh, Les Brown talked about it, and I experienced it with being a DJ. Like, party friends are party friends, gym friends, gym friends. Mm-hmm. Then you have business friends that's business mm-hmm. friends. And you have friends that's actually friends in every capacity. Mm-hmm. So you have to learn how to compartmentalize mm-hmm. that. And that is why I ask the question, because in your industry, maybe it gets more personal. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? And a lot of times, if I'm at the gym with the guys, we play ball with a lot of guys, I'm like, yo, I'm having a party tonight. One, of, one out of a two out of maybe 30 guys will show up. Mm-hmm. Because that's not the type of it's relationship that we have. Exactly. Like basketball game. Exactly. Everybody. Everybody there. Yeah. They will be that, at that. So it's like Les Brown talked about learning how to compartmentalize that those relationships. So that's why I, asked, I even asked that question. Mm-hmm. What about for you, 88? <laughs> We're working on it. We got game. Work. <laughs> Jay? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm like, um, I can honestly say for me, um, I'm a lot of people in yeah. my circle. You know, like um, I I kind of like laying, staying low key. I like staying to myself. You know, I like to watch, watch the room, watch how people move, how mm-hmm. they do things. But then at the same time, like like I said, learning a lot from Baylor, like mm-hmm. how he's able to go in a room and stand there right. and he just grows. Mm-hmm. And then everybody just flocks. Like I still get mesmerized by watching them do like yeah. mm-hmm. I've never seen I've, I actually learned that over time. Like that's just, that's something that you like anybody could develop because it's skill, right? yeah, so social anxiety is a thing. You know, mm-hmm. if you if you don't break out of that, you're not gonna be able to go in a room and just talk to a random person. Yeah. You know, if if you realize if, if I go on an airplane and I sit beside a white person, they'll be able to strike up a conversation within minutes. Mm-hmm. You know, if you sit beside a black person, it's like I'm over here and you're over there, so stay on your right. side, yeah. type of thing. So I've learned from them how they grow their business so much. Because I could meet him. I don't know what he does, but he could be connected to me in some way. I could look at him and say, hey, you know, I'm looking for an investor. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you I know somebody. And that's how the relationship grows. So being able to do that, I think now I'm trying to go to more social functions when it comes to business to meet different people and relationships for a lot of people, let me tell black people this, relationships are gonna help your business grow way further than you are right now. Yes. That's what I've learned. Very true. I would ask what's next, but you've already went to the next level being a college professor. So tell us about that, Bailey. Okay, so, all right, so I I was listening to him talk about relationship. So, uh, you know, I'm always looking for a sign, I'm looking for a time, and I I had an experience in the past two years where I was just like, okay, I'm gonna let the universe tell me where to go. Mm-hmm. So we had, um, ADA had launched this project and we were here in Coral Springs and this was a big opportunity for us because we always said Coral Springs was popping, parking them was good. Mm-hmm. ADA was like, okay, he's ready to go. I was like, perfect, we're ready to go then. So when we got this project launched, I had got a call from my cousin, Ben. You remember my cousin, Ben? I think so. My cousin, Ben, anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was like, hey, uh, you ready to go to law school? <laughs> that was a sign for the universe. It was a sign for the universe because I had spoken to him 10 years prior. Oh. And he was struggling to finish his undergraduate degree. He went to FAM. I was at FSU. Remember, I was at FSU with that FAM. Mm-hmm. He never finished, and it took him a long time. So anybody that didn't finish college, you know, he it was, it was 10 years in. And he wanted to be a sports agent. So we're talking about sports agent representation. Mm-hmm. He loves sports. He's mm-hmm. passionate sports. I was like, man, you need to go to law school for that because you got to do the contract. I'm just talking a mess. And I was like, but you got to at least finish your undergraduate. Mm-hmm. And if you do that, I'll go with you because mm-hmm. I'm joking with him. So that's what I was <laughs> So I was like, okay, well, look, let's go. I'm ready to go. So, you know, and that's kind of how I've been rolling. I was already teaching. I was My whole plan was to just teach business. I was yeah. like, talking business. And uh, I was going to teach business. We still operate the salons. And then, but you know, law school. One of those things I bit more than I think I can chew. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like, you have to break it down in pieces. In <laughs> well, I'm in four in the morning yeah. grinding on this thing. It's tough. But I I remember when um, I don't even know if I put pieces together back then because I was so young and just naive in life with knowing that you were an educator for business, mm-hmm. and we went to Atlanta. <laughs> oh, your first trip. <laughs> and he was like, "All right, I need you to." Deal with, to handle the 
what was it? Uh, PowerPoint. The PowerPoint. Yeah. And I'm like, well, what are we even doing here? I was just excited to go to Atlanta yeah, and just. Too. You were trying to party. I was trying to <laughs> party and hang out. And I'm in, I went in this class. This man has a whole huge class come in, uh, Browner Brothers. Yeah, we're doing social media. And I'm in the front and I'm like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing right now. This man just threw me into this class with him. And that's when I found out that you were into teaching business and education and stuff like that. And you were just, and it goes back to like, um, what we were talking about earlier, like how you can just go into a, a, a space and you just can command a room. I didn't even know anything about it, the word anxiety at that point of life. And I, <laughs> you had it. I just, I, I think I just naturally just, it fed off on me. Like, right. because you were just, you've always just been nonchalant. Like just, let's just get it done. Let's just do it. Yeah, like, what, when you said you know, business, what level of business is overall business? So yeah, what was marketing. that? My, my yeah, marketing. Market. So I, I always believe, well, the first thing I learned in business was you need clients. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I brought to all of the Dubs was uh, my brother-in-law made websites. I was like, you know what? We got to have a website. This mm-hmm. is yeah, now, what, this is 2002? I can have websites. You can't even think that far. Yeah. <laughs> it was the equivalent of like having a TikTok right now or something. Yeah. I was about to start high school right yeah. there. So, <laughs> yeah, so you were, you know, salons that have websites. So I said, like, we need to be a web. And website was marketing. Mm-hmm. So then we did been in marketing and that we started teaching marketing. I like, look, if you want to be successful in business, you got to have great marketing. Marketing. So then my, I went to school for business, went to school for business, and then that was just marketing. So I was just teaching marketing to be a professional. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, in in that marketing space, we were talking about it earlier with the different aspects of it. Um, as I'm going, I'm learning, but I've, I've realized that there's different demographics to reach with different type of marketing. Mm-hmm. You know, because QVC is still selling. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so they are. That is on QVC. Right. One of our biggest launches now. She launched the same way through Target. And a lot of young QVC. people are not going on QVC. No. Older people are going. It's a demographic. There's still a market for them. Right. And then you have the, the other side, which is the young people. They'll go on the TikTok or Instagram and see a product, or they see something trending. They see you wearing it and be like, all right, that like, looks nice. I'm going to buy it too. Uh-huh. You got influencer marketing. Then there's just so much layers to it. And doing a festival, like, Dealing with older people. First of all, older people are rude as hell. That's number one. <laughs> <laughs> are they, they worse than the young? Yeah, oh, man. Way worse. They stuck in their ways kind of thing, the older people. Yes, they and they speak their minds so, like... Clearly. Yeah. yeah. Man, listen. The young ones ain't going to talk to you. They, go, no, they, you. they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> if I do a festival one year and I have no complaints, I've done a perfect festival. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no old person person that comes and complain about something simple. Right. I'm going to tell you I'm gonna tell you the story. So... The first year we had it, um, we started the show at 2 o'clock. And somebody, an um, uh, older couple pulled up at 2.45. And they were like, so why we can't get in? I was like, Yo, it's, it's 1.45. Like, you can't get in until 2 o'clock. Yeah. He was like, all right, cool. Bro, this man went back and stood out by the door and stood there until 1.58. 1.58. I was like... <laughs> So it's two minutes, you're not gonna let me in? And he started to go off, and I'm like, bro, <laughs> if two o'clock comes and this man can't get in? You better have that door open. Oh, mm-hmm. man, that is how rude they are. They don't care, bro. Mm-hmm. Everything has to be for right. them. And but you know? that demographic is clear on what their expectations are. Exactly, so now you have to figure out how to make them happy, how to make the young people happy, how to make the babies happy. Mm-hmm. To, like, there's so many different ways to do these marketing but things. But if you figure that out, yeah. Beast. The yeah. person that figures out their market. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm learning one now. I'm learning my journey now. Boy, if you figure out that market, no matter what genre. Yeah. The marketing aspect of it is, is pretty good. But even, even with grabbing attention now, it's like attention span is so short that, you know, you see something for two seconds and you scroll past it, you forget about it. Yeah, they don't like long. No. So if you hold, mm-hmm. hold, if you hold a person on a video for, for, for 30 seconds, you won. I'm like, big on that. Yeah. So you, yeah. So yeah. You know, <laughs> He's we big on that. An hour right now. Hour ten. Them shorts is going in. Thirty seconds short. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shorts. Mm-hmm. So I'll give you. Do we have many shorts we got? We said at least three, four shorts. Nice. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We got some good shorts coming. <laughs> and I have to start doing those daily because it takes time to make content. Yeah. It, it takes does. time to make content. Yeah. But your market. Interesting. You already said it. Yeah. Market. Little. Yeah. Attention span, especially Gen Z. Mm-hmm. They have no attention span. That's how those podcasts I want to know because you just you just need that thirty seconds. Sure. Yeah. Now you were asking you were asking how how is the AI and all that going, going 
gonna change the Gen Z is gonna make it so much worse. Mm-hmm. You know, because now there's gonna there's gonna be no attention span. Yeah. That's yeah. What use already. So I'm, what I'm seeing from my colleagues at the law school, they are the AI everything. Yeah. And I tried it, I was like, I ain't gonna use that man. I'm, I'm but that's like old people talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, bro. But then a lot of people don't realize that AI has been around because you have Siri, you have Alexa, you have all these are AIs. You know, this is, you know this is next level. This is next level. Next level. Next level. The chat GPT. If they release that to us too, imagine what they got. Yeah. Right. And they giving this to us. And that's what I told somebody the other day, like 19 Keys talk about it. Like we have to figure out how to get into that industry because if we don't, we're going to be left behind. Mm-hmm. You know, we, there's no black social media developers until recently. If we got into that early, like with the Facebook era, we would have some black billionaires right now. Well, I know some. Microsoft has an executive that was there. He, he was there actually. A, he was their attorney, mm-hmm. and he's now like one of the major executives at Microsoft. Um, but that technology space has been dominated by like the Asian Indian money. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah them So even 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 Silicon Valley. Yeah, he's in Silicon Valley with Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. But. But like you like you're saying, it's now it's not even them. It's Asian and Indian, straight on the technology. Side. But they're not giving them that credit though. Mm-hmm. They're pay, they're paying them pennies on a dollar. Yeah, you're not gonna get the credit. Yeah. Well, you get Tech, that tech check is, is it's big. Tech check is. Yeah, it is. But but if you if you think about it, they could hire. There's no Balmer check though. Yeah. <laughs> Balmer, you know. yeah. But we're right there. Mm-hmm. We're right there. The thing is, they're hiring. I think we're not. I think we're not making it sexy. I think our culture not it's not it. making it. I yeah. think if we and to be honest with you, if you look at them, say uh, these typical black tech, you're gonna be like, he may be not as fresh as say my boy over here that that can run a four 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 a four three, mm-hmm. and he's you know six foot three. Right. That's what we want to look at. The mm-hmm. tech dude might be five five eight, slightly making overweight. millions. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But he's the guy that's gonna lead us to the AI future. And I think I think like we Bill Gates ain't cool, right? But he's cool. Mm-hmm. Like he got tracks about Bill Gates. He <laughs> <laughs> get whatever he wants. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like, like you say, we don't make it sexy. Yeah, our culture don't make it no. sexy. No. You have to be an athlete or, or a rapper or yeah. artist, somebody who's popular. Yeah, that's yeah. Make somebody. Yeah, we gotta make cool AI. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool lawyers, cool yeah. marketing people, lawyers cool. Are not yeah. Really nice guy. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, lawyers are not that's great. Yeah. They're useful. They're very useful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially so for I'll business. Be, hopefully, I'll be our first counsel. You know I mean? Yes, that, please. Yeah, because I need a lawyer for every aspect right now. I yeah. need one for, I need an entertainment lawyer. I need a business lawyer. I need all that. I told you, you got to take him out to the golf field. That's where all the business stuff goes on, yeah, right? Golf, a lot of <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I heard that's what, that's the place I'm gonna that's start it. playing golf. Yeah, come play golf. Now again, the thing about golf and you are athlete, right? So I yeah. play with athletes. Mm-hmm. Now. You gotta look crazy for the first two days. <laughs> some, some people can't handle that bare embarrassment. I don't get it. You be slapping the ball around all crazy. Some people say I can't do that. Yeah, I Once you get over that part, yeah. and then you can get competitive, you you That's his lane too. That competitive yeah, lane. Love that. Stuff. So I'm gonna talk golf more often. Yeah. Top, top, golf, is, top, top golf is disrespectful, <laughs> but it's like you know, it's like it's like playing basketball on an eight foot ground. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Like, I'm gonna play basketball. Eight foot ground. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but when you get out of the course, course, it's different. I'm going to get into it. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm always there. I'm right down the corner. I'm getting old. I can't really jump like I used to. Yeah, in golf, you can play this. I'm playing with dudes maybe 70, 60 years old. Yeah. You got long, long. You, I played basketball one time. I almost, right. I almost lost one. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, they get expensive. Oh, that they have yeah. a load. All right, so I'm going to switch it. Yeah, so we're going to go to our final thoughts. Um, this is where we just have you guys just give, like, just the last final thoughts, you know, some students to life juice for them. Just give a gem, like, give something, somebody some advice. Anything, Anything that comes to mind. Yeah, sorry. Start us off. Um, I'm always say what I always say. Like, in life, you got to decide what you want to do. You want to be a predator or a prey. Mm-hmm. So, you know, predators is over. <laughs> yes, sir. So, you know, so I believe in that. I, I live by that creed. I, like I said, learning everything I learned from this man right here. Mm-hmm. Um, this man eats real good. So I got to make sure that I can follow the same footsteps mm-hmm. to make sure that I can have the next person there that after me that going to make sure that they eat good. I eat good. They eat good. We all eat good. Mm-hmm. Pray. 
Right. You're just sitting there waiting to sit down. Yeah. Is it pray P R A Y? No, P R A Y. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> pray and pray. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pray to do or pray. That's what you gotta do. That's true. That's true. That's uh, and so uh, I want to thank you guys. I'm a, I'm a student to life now. Yes. And uh, my thing is always going to be patience is the best way to the destination. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times we want to rush there, but patience you are gonna get there so much faster. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. I think my, mine would be um, in a in a relationship aspect. I've, I've learned recently, like my brother. Shout out to my brother Drew with Miller's Marketing. He he called me. It was like, yo. You know you're better at this than me because he now he does um, networking events and he has he's had success with networking events. It was like, yo, actually you're better at talking to people than I am. But what I said to him was, I said, I can't go in a room with all these business people and I have no value. I have nothing to say. I do this thing and I do it extraordinary or I have this thing to offer because if you're not use if you're not useful, you're useless. So I can't go into these rooms and say, you know, I have a dream to do this thing, but I've never actually pursued it. At that time, I didn't have that. Now I can go and say, I own this, I do this, and this is what my path is. You know, how can I be of, um, of, of, of use to you? Mm -hmm. You know, so I didn't have that. So that's what I explained to him. And now I'm finding the, the value so much in relationships and going to these events and meeting somebody as simple as, a stockbroker or a banker or somebody who even simply owns a business and they're able to say, I have a lawyer who could probably do this for you for free. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And having the, those things at your disposal, even even finding guests for the podcast, you know, going there and seeing an accident lawyer who will be able to come on and talk to my audience about accident law and stuff like mm -hmm. that. You know, like that's what I, that is what I would tell my um, my audience is, try to develop good relationships, mm -hmm. not just personal relationships, but good business relationships. Even if you work a nine to five, you could meet somebody yep. that could be of use to you. So that would be. You know, I tell people that all the time. I'm like, this, this not Starbucks, but let's say a regular, ch ch see, um, Starbucks getting money. <laughs> and their, their workers are yeah. really good. They get really But like, say like, Wendy's or something and like they're they have such big attitudes you know and I'm like if they would just smile and be happy they can have someone drive up that's going to take them to the next level just because of their smile and their mm -hmm. energy you know it's like wherever you are just have that good vibes and energy yeah, about you because you can you can yeah, yeah you your can, attitude yeah. for real your attitude will take your enthusiasm everywhere. like you, you might not like that McDonald's job at the drive through but right. somebody pull up because of your nice smile and your service and give you an extra hundred and be hours. like hey or hey I got this opening for you just in case you're trying to you know leave this place or something because your energy was so good and they know that they need, they need someone with dope customer service you, you saying know? that you know what I hate the most so oh. when I go to like a restaurant or something and somebody was providing service and because you hate your job it shows on your face yeah yeah. I hate that so yeah, much. That's so we hate that we we yeah, that's so Oh my god, so much. the like, worst. Like if you don't want to do it, just don't. You know. Right. I, I learned to keep that outside the door. Like I knew even when I was here, and even to now doing here, I don't walk in, issue. never walk in the salon with like, what's going on with you? Yeah. Never had to ask me that because I would leave that outside. I don't know if you guys know about Pepper's Kitchen. I would love for you to guys to try that. Right. No, no, Pepper's Kitchen. That's if you're, if you're going Instagram type. You like P -E -P -P -A -Z his, his Kitchen. That's not Pepper. No, no, no. He he. Well, that's not about the salon where we. No, nah, that's Peppers. That's nah, no. not Peppers. Peppers is. He, he's he does he does it out of, a, out of a warehouse. Yeah. Set it up like a kitchen, real nice. And the reason why he attracts so much people is because of his attitude. Yes. He don't care what's going on that day. Life. Once you walk in. Welcome to Pepper's Kitchen. How you doing? And you get a smile and you get jokes. Yep. No matter what. Good energy. Sometimes people people just love him because of that. Good energy. If the food is not good that day, you yeah. won't realize that yeah. because yeah, he thought about how he was acting. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And he grew his business so much just from his attitude. Yeah. Of, of, service. Yeah. Simple. It's just as simple as that. And I feel like a lot of people don't have that. You be going through something that day and it just shows all over your face. Yeah. Um, so my last final thought is sometimes you gotta slow down and get some rest because you'll catch the fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the body is giving you a signal. <laughs> yeah, and um, I, it's funny, but it's serious. Speaking because, from experience. Yeah, and we couldn't record, guys, for the last two weeks because I was ill. 
But in that downtime, I did so much brainstorming mm. and processing. That's what trips are for. Huh? That's what trips are for. That's why I take so much trips. Yeah. When I'm on vacation, I don't want to think. I think a lot. I can't. I want to not think. Listen. But being ill and being and not working and when I don't work, I'm emotional. When I can't service my clients. <laughs> I, I, this is my second time finding that. My first time was here. My second time was this go around. I was so emotional not to service, not being able to service my client, but I had to look at the good parts. Yeah. And, but in the good side of that, I was able to just shut the world out and just be and process. And now I feel like I'm ready to take on so much. So even though you're ill and you're down, you know, use that to regenerate yourself and your mind and your body. So for me, once I'm here, I'm working. Once I'm in South Florida, I have, I'm doing something. Working. So once I, I, mm -hmm. I took a trip somewhere, I kind of just blocked that out and I just have time mm -hmm. to, to think. Cause sometimes I, if I go out, go, go, go out on a trip, I'll still take a walk by myself because mm -hmm. I love going on vacations where the beach is. Yeah. You know, I could sit on the balcony. Yeah, I sit on the balcony or go for a walk on the beach or, or even sitting down at dinner by myself and just mm -hmm. taking everything in. I come back refreshed. Yeah. I can't sit here. Yeah, I love yeah. being alone, man. I love it. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like everybody needs to take our time off. Right? Yeah, you know? to just process. He, he did his already. Didn't you do his already? He did his yeah, already. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about him with seven days a week. Oh, oh he's a workaholic. We used to, I y'all still got to force him to take work like days off? He got to learn this. I'm taking a day off. He, he, look, when he was coming at seven, when I was an apprentice and he was a stylist, if he came in at seven, I came in at seven. If you left at 12, I left at 12. Yeah. So that, so that mindset of what he did and I saw what he was able to do, I'm just trying to replicate the same exact thing that he did. Mm -hmm. Christine, that just gave me a thought that I forgot to mention to you guys too about a lot of people who's not able to say, I'm going to be an intern or go be yeah. in certain spaces like... I would go sit there and watch a DJ for free and take in everything that he's doing mm -hmm. because I love nice. him so much. You don't have to pay me to do what I love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if I, Super right, right. Yeah. And, and you doing that can build relationships, you doing that can build character. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are not gonna do that. They're not gonna take the time out to do yeah. to just that. Yeah. Even the value that you get from that experience, I do that, I run that all the time. Yeah. yeah. Like even my new humble, I'm in a humble experience right now. And yeah, I be in there like, it's heaven. Mm -hmm. if being beneath somebody just just learning mm -hmm. is heaven to me yeah. Yeah. some people don't like to learn from nobody they know it all i love it but i think a lot of times being if you don't find the right people that's the problem being in certain spaces where you're right. the right people is not actually no, let your guard down and teach you everything they know they always the keep part. that open mind to learning when i came to this company i um the very first time i did a i had to do an assignment for class and one of the men, one of the people who worked in the salon, I never been in the salon before. And when I walked into All Daughter for the very first time, like, I never experienced what it was. I had called him like two weeks later, like, look, I'm not gonna work for free. Yeah. Just to get that money, knowledge. Get this, yeah. Get that knowledge. And and we'll never say gift. no. We'll, our our mm -hmm. company mm -hmm. will, our, we yeah. like we'll never say no. A lot of people will not have that home. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they, you know, whatever. Okay. It's so Good rewarding. Luck. Good luck. Man, humbleness is rewarding. Yeah. And open minds to learning, Super. so rewarding. But also being able to teach, too, mm -hmm. is also another rewarding thing that a lot of people don't talk about. Yeah. You know, teaching. Like, I'm a, I'm a mentor at a, at a um, middle school. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. kids there. And every time I go there to talk to them, it's like, I'm learning from them too. Yep. You know, and it's yeah, rewarding. That's the best part of it. Giving is like the most rewarding thing ever. Yeah. You know, that's why I love to give that's so much. That's the universal principle. Yeah. It's, it's, it's more selfish than anything. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. We used to go to the schools and talk to them. Yeah. The schools, yeah. I started, when I was here, we were doing, um, Career, day. career. I was going to career day at elementary schools yeah. and talking to little kids, and it was just so refreshing. Yeah, Very guys, refreshing. Go ahead and donate to my foundation, Ecstatic Foundation. Yeah, uh -huh. do that, do that. <laughs> right. um, yeah, uh, you go ahead, take us out, stretch. Uh, you take us out? Yeah, take us out. All right, guys, please remember to like, share, subscribe. We're on Instagram, we're on YouTube, we're on Apple Podcasts. Um, Spotify, so don't forget to hit that follow and subscribe button. Uh, leave a comment to let us know what you think and stay in the loop yep. conversation. I want to thank 
um, Bailey and ADA for being on today. We're, we're going to have them back. Yes. Because you know, we're at all the other <laughs> Yes. So they're definitely going to have them back. Absolutely. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in for one more episode of the Student Alive podcast where learning and unlearning has no limits. We out. Peace. Bye.